there's this Ghanaian YouTuber called Sheldon who is always, 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 always been on the neck of women. When I tell you, it's a fear we men. Fear we men. The gender we men. See, fear them. And emphasizing to fear women. So, my, I keep saying this, but my brothers, they don't want to listen. Yeah, women. Oh, oh. But with this case, we are going to be fearing men. Because with this case, Miss Benita Danka was shot and paralyzed in her own bed. Wow! Let's roll the intro. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Twist Story. And according to court documents, against organized crime is on the rise survive the attacks. <laughs> okay. Hi everybody. Welcome to Twister's Story. I hope you missed us. It's been a week. Uh and I hope you had a blessed and amazing week. I know we did. Um if you're new here, welcome to Twister's Story. On this channel, we cover true crime, anything, murder, um, assault, any criminal case, we cover it here. So if you have any case in mind that you want to hear about it, you can drop it down in the comment box below. We will research about it and then hopefully get to present it on this channel. And last week, huh? Last week, last week, last week. Last week was fun. Last week was nervous because it was the first video. <laughs> We covered the Accra Strangler. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, um, you can go down the channel, um, videos in the channel, and then you can watch it. Uh, it was the first video. Uh, we mentioned that we were going to put the letter on the side of the video. However, um, it wasn't there. <laughs> this week, we'll make sure that all the pictures are on there. <laughs> and all the comments, the like, we received them. Uh, we are very grateful and we hope you keep liking, commenting, and then don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> today, 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 we are going to be talking about the beautiful Miss Benita Danka. There's this Ghanaian YouTuber called Sheldon who is always, 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 always been on the neck of women. And emphasizing to fear women. But with this case, at the end of this case, it's going to be revised. We are going to be fearing men. Because with this case, Miss Benita Danka was shot and paralyzed in her own bedroom. Yeah, that is a very scary thing. Um, that is not something that you usually think about when you're going to bed. We think about, you know, in the morning, God waking us up, giving us the breath to wake up. But you never think of waking up not being shot in your own bedroom. So it is a very interesting case. So this is the story of the bullet of Ifo. Fanny Tadanka has been in a relationship um, for about nine years with her husband, Ifo Dankwa. Um, they've been dating for about five years and married for four years. So calculating from the day of the incident back, that means Benita met Ifo around the age of 20 years old. Um, at that time, Benita thought he has, she has met her dream man. You know, the relationship is going to be great. They're going to go on dates, hang around, have fun, bond, get to know each other, and then later develop into marriage, get married with him, have kids, kids running around the house. Okay, let's pause there about the kids. Because during the dating period with Ethel, um, Ethel told Benita that he does not want kids. However, you know, you can't stop or put a pause on someone's dream. So Benita decided to keep dreaming um, about having kids, you know, having the whole married life because she thought that later on in life, Ethel was going to change his mind and later on want kids. So she decided to continue on with the relationship, even though they both had different dreams, different goals for the relationship. So five years into the relationship, 
Efo kneeled down on his knees and proposed to Benita. One would think, well, I'm sure everybody have the same question that I have in my mind at this point. Have they solved the issue of children? Are they now in agreement? Are they going to have kids? Are they not going to have kids? Well, these questions were not answered when Ifo proposed. Um, however, that didn't stop Benita from saying yes. She said yes to the man of her dreams, that she would marry him. So they got married. And four years into the marriage, at this point, there's still no kids yet. However, miraculously, Benita got pregnant. So one would say her dreams or ignoring um, the issue of children, did it benefit her? Because at the end of it, she was pregnant. That means she's going to have kids, right? Does that mean Ifo is now unhappy because the marriage is not heading into the direction that he dreamed of? Well, we don't know the answer yet. Maybe he was not. But... Benita was pregnant at this point, which was August 28, 2015, which was a Friday. It was a usual day, go to work, come back, cook, eat, watch TV, probably sleep. Um, when I was a kid, we would usually after make dinner after school. And then after dinner, if you were a student and it was a weekday, you would sit behind the TV and study. Um, if it was a weekend, you get to like watch TV with everybody, probably in news. But most of the time, there was like a movie going on. So on a Friday, I'm thinking Benita is back from work, um, cooked dinner, and was probably watching African movies that they usually show on TV. And afterwards, they went to bed, Benita and Ifo. So they went to bed. Um, however, Benita got up in the middle of the night to go use the restroom. And when she came back, Efo also got up to go use the restroom. Benita decided to wait for Efo to come back before she goes to bed. However, Efo was taking long. So while waiting for him, she, passed, she fell asleep. Um, the next morning, she woke up not feeling well and wasn't able to move. So she called her husband um, to go call the neighborhood men. Um, so in Ghana, it's called Compound House, if I remember correctly. It's kind of, it has the same ideology as an apartment where, you know, you have someone leaving um, on top of you or at the bottom of you. But with this one, it's not a story building. It's usually like a a house, a townhouse, if you want to call it. Um, the houses are together. There's like different rooms in each building and different family members living in different rooms pretty much. So Benita called her husband to call her neighbor, meaning the people that probably live in the next room to their right or to their left, um, to call them to come in to help him so that he can take her to the hospital. So his husband hurried outside and called two men that lived um, in the compound house to come in to help him because his wife was not feeling well. In their neighbor's mind, they were thinking, since she's pregnant, she's probably in labor or probably not feeling well relating to the pregnancy. So they hurried in, help him, um, Efo dressed um, Benita up and then the neighbors helped him carry um, Benita into a taxi and into the hospital. The two men did not go with him to the hospital. Only one man went with him to the hospital. So the taxi driver drove them into Tama Community 2 Hospital. At the hospital, um, they were met by the nurse and the nurse asked what was wrong. And Efo told the nurse that his wife has been shot, which shocked the neighbor because to him, he thought that Benita was probably in labor or was not feeling well relating to the pregnancy. So he was shot. Um, because if he knew that it was a shooting, he would probably will not move Benita yet and probably will call the police first, which... I would do because if a neighbor calls you and says his wife or someone in the room is shot, 
I think the first thing that you probably do is pick up your phone, call 911, call the police, call the emergency service so that they can come take a look. Because if it's a shooting, I'm not a medical person, so if you're in the hospital, correct me if I'm wrong. If it's a shooting and you probably move the person in the wrong way, maybe the bullet is inside, it might travel to another place that's not supposed to travel. So... I think the first instinct for me was would be to call the emergency services. But the neighbor didn't know that it was a shooting. That's why he moved Benita Dunkwa. I think in an interview that he had with Joy TV, he mentioned that um, if he knew that it was a shooting, he wouldn't have gone inside. Because if it's a shooting, then that means it's a crime scene. You don't want to step into a crime scene, right? Or you don't want to move the victim and hurt them even more, right? So it would be, I, I understand him when he says that if he knew it was shooting, he wouldn't move um, Benita. So anyways, at the hospital, the husband told the nurse that his wife has been shot. So the nurse directed them to another department of the hospital because I guess the taxi driver drove them into the labor ward thinking, thinking that... Um, Benita was in labor. That's why she was brought into the hospital. So when we were going, the husband would keep saying that you'll be fine, you'll be fine in the car. Then the taxi driver asked me, what's, 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 what's wrong? And I told her that maybe it's, it's first time pregnant, maybe it's finding it difficult to, and maybe it's about to deliver baby or something. And we rushed to the hospital and then we sent her to the labor ward. So when we sent her to the labor ward, the, ne the nurse asked us that, what's the problem? The ne husband said it was a gunshot. So they went to the other department that the nurse directed, but the other department also mentioned that um, since it's a shooting, they will need a police report, which makes sense. Um, <sighs> Anyway, so Benita was then treated for the gunshot wound. However, unfortunately, she was paralyzed from the waist down. Um, she's not able to move. Uh, the doctor said that she will probably be later on be able to use her hands. However, she's going to need um, therapy. And Benita has been going through numerous of surgeries to get better. Um, and her baby... Thankfully, thank God, um, they were able to deliver the baby safely, even though it was premature, but the baby is doing fine and was healthy. However, the baby's mother is not going to be able to move, um, use the restroom by herself. Um, she's not going to be able to do much because of the gunshot wound. She was paralyzed and is bedridden. And at this point, her husband, Efo Dankwa, abandoned her, so she was living with her parents. Uh, after the hospital had treated her, there were some hospital bills. Um, Benita stated that she called her husband so that her husband can sell the vehicle that they have and also be able to help gather the money so that they can pay the hospital bill. However, she mentioned that her husband... Um, does not respond to it and is not willing to help them either financially or nothing at all. So Benita is with her parents, her mother and her father. Her mother, who is 54 years old, at this point in her life, she has raised her kids and her kids, ha must have, I'm sure most of her kids has been married. So at this point, I'm sure... Um, she wants a life where she's relaxing at home and her grandkids are running around her, you know, pampering her grandkids, you know, come visit for a few hours and then go back home or the grandkids come visit and then go back home. At this point in her life, 54 years old, um, I, I'm sure she never thought of, you know, coming back and raising a baby, which is her daughter's son, and also taking care of her daughter who can't move, changing diapers, um, and waking up in the middle of the night just to 
move the baby to the mother to feed and things like that. I never, I'm sure she never imagined her life being that way. And I'm sure most people her age, 54 years old, never imagined that something like this can happen to their child. It is heartbreaking. When you see the interview where, um, when you see that documentary by Manasi Azuri, it's actually on YouTube. Um, the mother talks about how um, she have to take care of the baby now because her daughter is paralyzed and can't do much for herself. It's heartbreaking as you watch it. Um, we will link it below um, in the description box. So if you want to go see that documentary, it is heartbreaking to see the mother and father talk about your daughter and what's going on with your daughter. As well, um, they interview Benita Danqua and she described um, how she feels. She's been, Because she's on the bed the whole time, she has some skin um, irritations that she has to like go through, which is, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking and sad. You will never imagine that your life will be that way. You're thinking your husband is supposed to be your head, your protector, someone who is supposed to protect you and ends up being the one that hits you. I'm sure it's very heartbreaking. After this whole incident, um, if Dankwa was arrested, however, she, he was let out on bail. Um, and because he's let out on bail, you know, he's able to move around. And sadly, Benita and Ifu still goes to the same church. So I'm sure Sundays she will have to see him and to see someone who have hurt you this bad, someone who have put your life in danger every Sunday, at least once a week. Um, uh-uh. At least once a week. I, I, it, it's, it's traumatizing, I would say. Uh, yeah. So let's go back to the crime. Um, so Benita shot in her room. Um, you're guessing who is it? Who shot Benita? So the police, this case was reported to the police by Benita's parents. Um, so the police began their investigation. So they went back to the crime scene. However, most of the stuff at the crime scene was tempered because after the shooting, um, later on, um, Benita's cousin went to the house, I guess, to clean the house. And she saw a bloody towel. Um, when she found the bloody towel, she showed it to Benita's husband, Efudanko. And Efu told her to get rid of it. It's not needed. So she went ahead and washed it and took it to her house. So that was one of the evidence that was, I guess, tempered with or lost because the crime scene was interrupted. So that was gone. Um, what's left is the room, right? She was shot in the room. So you imagine that someone came in with a broke the door or broke the window to come in. However, the windows and the doors were perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It doesn't show that anybody have come in or have gone out. Um, so that means whoever shot Benita was in the room already, which they would have noticed when they were going to bed or before they locked the door. So no one came in, no one went out. So that means the person that shot Benita had keys to the house that can come in and go out of the house anytime, right? And it was in the middle of the night. So if someone was coming in, opening the door, I'm sure her and her husband would have heard them, right? So that means the person that shot Benita must have been in the house. And there are only two people in the house, Benita and her husband, right? So imagine you're in a house, just you, doors are locked, windows are locked, security alarms are on. So if someone is coming in, you hear. So it's just you and let's say your friend or your husband. And you get stabbed. You didn't stab yourself. So then who stabbed you, right? So we can all imagine who stabbed you. So that same thing applies to this case. The doors are locked. Windows are good. Um, there's no breaking in. So 
and then someone gets shot. So who is the suspect in this case? So the husband became the suspect in this case. That's why he was arrested and was bailed out. The case was investigated and later went to court. Um, Ifo Dankwa was found guilty um, and was sentenced to 39 years in prison, in jail. So what was the motive for shooting his wife? Is it because that he, the issue of not wanting a child was not discussed and agreed on? So Ifo did not want a kid, um, so because of that he shot his wife? Or is it that he was out of love with his wife and wanted to move on? However, he couldn't move on because at this point, his wife is pregnant and with, a ki- and with a child. So he couldn't move on or divorce her. <sighs> the motive is unclear why he shot her. I will think that it's because of the kid because he made it clear at the beginning that he didn't want kids. It was later found out by the police that if Danko had a girlfriend, um who he was with um, and was arrested with. And the lady made it clear that she was in a relationship with Ifo. So one can say that both reasoning apply. He probably want to leave his wife or leave the marriage. However, there was a child, so he thought that probably the only way out was to shoot and kill Benita. Then both the child and the mother is not there, then he can probably move on um, and marry or have a relationship with a girlfriend. Um, probably, probably be the motive, but still, I don't think it's a reason to end someone's life or destroy someone's life. Benita was 29 years old when this incident happened. She had a very promising future she was working with a domestic airline in Ghana and was looking forward to being promoted and also growing and developing her career in this airline industry. Um, she was a daughter. Um, she's now a mother um, and she had a great future. However, all of that is destroyed because Benita is paralyzed from waist down and cannot move. All she can do is now sit in bed and wait. When she needs to pee or needs to use the restroom, she has to wait. Now she, as she mentioned in her documentary, now she can't go out with friends. She can't walk around. She mentioned that the one thing that she missed the most was just walking around, which is sad because it sounds like a very simple thing. It sounds like something that most of us won't dream of or won't wish, because it's something that we already have. But to her, she doesn't have that. And it's something that she wished for. At first, she wished to get promoted at work. She wished to probably buy a big house, but now she just wished she can walk just because of one man's bad decision or bad choices. This is the story of Benita Dankwa. Um, Yeah, that's it for today. Um, Stay safe. You're loved, so stay safe. And hope to see you next week. Like, comment, share, subscribe.